Hello, first grade. Okay, so you, as you know, we are in December now, and our theme this month is giving the gift of friendship. Now, that is a very big gift um, because when you give somebody the gift of friendship, it's a lot of responsibility on you. Um, and we're going to learn more about that in a very good book. It's called Little Ocho Saves the Sea, and it is written by Arden Martinez. So we're going to find out how Little Ocho, all by himself, the little guy, saves the sea. All right, I'm going to try to... Get it to where you all can see it as best as possible. All right. Little Ocho sat huddled by his cave at the bottom of the sea. Little Ocho, his mother called, what are you doing here? I thought you were going out to play with the other boys and girls of the sea. Not today, said Little Ocho. Not today or any day. My friends are not acting the way they used to act. They are being mean and doing awful things to each other. That doesn't sound very fun. Let's see here. There we go. Clarissa Clam won't open her shell anymore. She says all the sea creatures run to her when they have problems, but no one ever wants to listen to her problems. Sammy Seahorse has stopped sharing. I saw him holding a tiny sea plant and telling the other seahorses to go away. When I started to talk with him, he told me to mind my own business. Rude. Sheldon Shrimp is talking back to his mother. I heard Sheldon say, I won't, and you can't make me. Nobody else has to do what you make me do. I hate you. Ooh, ooh that's bad, bad to say to your parents or your adults. And Cindy Crab and Cora Crab were so busy fighting with each other, they didn't even know I was near them. Sounds like the sea is a little jumbled up down there. Everyone was so awful that I decided to get away from them all and go see Leon Lobster. Halfway there, I saw Megan Manta crying. She told me that Margot Manta thought Megan had gossiped about her and she didn't want to be Megan's friend anymore. It was just too much, she said. All I wanted to do was to get to Leon Lobster's home as quickly as I could. I thought it would be faster to cut through the giant oyster beds. That was a terrible mistake. A little oyster had brought a mussel home to play. The other oysters did not want anyone who was different in their sea community. Oh, that is not good at all. Let's see. Anyway. <clears throat> I was almost to Leon Lobster's when Evan the Eel swam up to me. He was wearing a gold chain that he took from Edna Eel when it slipped off her body. As he swam off, he said, Finders keepers, losers weepers. Oh, that's stealing. That is not good. Finally, I reached Leon Lobster's house. He was lying on top of a rock with trash all around him, doing nothing. He said he was tired of picking up his rock because no one cared if the ocean was clean. It was awful. I crawled back home as fast as I could, and here I am going to stay. Little Ocho said to his mother, do you really want to stay home and never play with your friends again? Said his mother. 
You are a really clever little octopus. I believe that if you try, you can come up with a way to change the sea creatures back to the good friends that they have been before. Little Ocho thought and thought, hmm, what could I do to make my friends better? I have it. I know what I will do. I will give each of my eight tentacles a name. I will name them the different ways that my sea friends should behave. One will be called caring, another will be sharing, and the others will be cooperative, honest, tolerant, respectful, and trustworthy. And last but not least, responsibility. That will be a good starting point. But how can I get my friends to believe me? I need something really clever. Little Ocho thought and thought. Hmm, what could I do? I've got it, Little Ocho shouted, and he began to make his plans. As Little Ocho crawled out of his cave, his mother said, Little Ocho, where are you going? I'm going to save the sea. He answered, and off Little Ocho went. Little Ocho crawled along the seabed, shouting, Come one, come all, follow me to the bottom of the sea show. Excited to see the show, his sea creature friends formed a line and followed him to the bottom of the sea. When Little Ocho stopped, his friends made a circle around him. Then he said, Before you are my eight tentacles. Each one stands for a good way to behave. When I tap you with one of my special tentacles, black ink will come out and spread into the water. When the ink disappears, you will stop behaving poorly and go back to being a kind sea creature I called my friends. You all think that's going to work? Let's see. Oh, sure, that's about as likely to happen as I am to come out of my shell, said Clarissa Clam. Okay, Clarissa Clam, answered little Ocho. You can let this tentacle tap you and go back to being the caring sea creature you were, or you can stay in your shell. The choice is yours. If I don't do this, I will have to live inside my shell all the time, forever, said Clarissa Clam. Golly, you would never see any of us again, said Evan Eel. Neither will I, said little Ocho. I would rather stay at home than see you living the way you are. Grumpy old friends are not good. The sea creatures looked at each other and said, okay, what do you want us to do? Little Ocho quickly released a steam of black ink. You just have to believe. First, little Ocho put his tentacle on Clarissa Clam. Then he looked directly into her eyes, released the black ink, and said, It's not any fun to live in the sea if the creatures have no harmony. So from this day forth, it will be my quest to help my friends want to be their best. As his black ink spread into the water, Ocho repeated the verse two more times. Then he removed his tentacle from Clarissa Clam and said, Now you will be as you were before, a happy little clam. Clarissa Clam smiled at Ocho and said, From this day forward, I will be caring and not shut my shell to others. I will try to listen carefully and help them, just like I would want them to listen to me if I ever needed it. Next, little Ocho put his tentacle on Sammy Seahorse, released his black ink, and said, It's not any fun to live in a sea if the creatures have no harmony. So from this day forth, it will be my quest to help my friends want to be their best. Ocho repeated the verse two more times. Then he removed his tentacle from Sammy Seahorse and said, now you will be as you were before. Sammy smiled and said, from this day forward, I will share. Okay. 
Then little Ocho put a tentacle on Cindy Crab and Cora Crab and released the black ink. He looked directly into their eyes and said, It's not any fun to live in the sea if the creatures have no harmony. So from this day forth, it will be my quest to help my friends want to live their best. Ocho repeated the verse two more times. Then he removed his tentacle from Cindy Crab and Cora Crab and said, Now you will be as you were before. Cindy and Cora looked at each other. Then they looked at the black ink cloud and said, From this day forth, we will cooperate with each other and talk about our disagreements and not just fight and argue all the time. Then little Ocho went from sea creature to sea creature, touching each with a special tentacle. As he spoke, black ink floated from his tentacles. Even Evan Eel returned the gold chain and was once again honest. The oysters welcomed the mussels and were once again tolerant of each other. Sheldon Shrimp became respectful and did not talk back to his mother. Megan and Margot Manta became trustworthy friends again, and Leon Lobster was once again responsible. Little Ocho told everyone how happy he was that the sea was going to be the same special place it had been before, and everyone returned to their homes. Then Little Ocho crawled back to his cave as fast as he could, smiling all the way. When he reached his cave, his mother was there. Little Ocho cried out. I did it. I did it. I saved the sea. Leon Lobster sat on his rock, ch chuckling to himself. That little Ocho, he thought, special tentacles. I don't think so. Little Ocho was just smart enough to think of a way to get all of us back to being what we wanted to be all along. And that was good friends. And that is the end, first grade. So I want to talk about some of the big words that were in this book, because some of these words are really big and you might not know what they mean. So let's go back and find all of the words that make a good friend. So in order to give the gift of friendship, there's a lot that goes into it. Um, and little Ocho, let me see if I can get it up here. Um, he thought if you're caring then you're a good friend. If you're sharing, then you're a good friend. If you're cooperative, you're a good friend. Honest, tolerant, respectful, trustworthy, and responsible. Those are all the characteristics of being a good friend. So what does caring mean? Caring means that um, you can have empathy for somebody else. And empathy means that you can actually put yourself into that person's shoes and understand what they're going through. Okay. Caring is just having a feeling that um, you should always want to help your friends. You should always want to be there for them. You care about their feelings. Um, you check on them if they come to school and they're and they're feeling and they look like they're feeling upset. Um, you might care about them enough to check on them and see how they are. What is sharing? I think by the time you're in first grade, you know what sharing is because um, we start teaching that in preschool. So sharing means if you have something, um, you should um, let others use it or you should um, take turns um, or uh, work out some kind of plan where the other person gets as much as you get. Um, that is what sharing is. Okay, um, so we should always share when we play, um, whenever we're eating, uh, whenever we're fighting with our brother and sisters about who's going to be playing the video game next. We should always take turns. We should always share. Um, the next is a big word, cooperative. Um, that's probably the hardest word maybe on here. So cooperative means that you have give and take. You can come up with a plan that makes each person happy. Um, sometimes that's hard to do, um, to cooperate. Um, but it's 
working together, um, being able to um, work in a group, being able to uh, get along with others, um, and just being a good person to work with. Um, you're cooperative, you're going to listen, you're going to do what the boss says, you're going to do what your teacher says, um, you're going to do what your grown up at home says. Um, so that is being cooperative, saying, I will help you in any way that I can. You just tell me what I can do. That's being cooperative. Um, honest. Honest means that we um, don't lie about ourselves. Um, we don't spread rumors about our friends. Uh, we are just an honest, good person to be around. Um, we are not going to lie to make anybody feel bad or sometimes not even to make people feel better because on down the line that can have a, wor a worse impact on that person or that friend. So we just want to be honest. And um, that goes along with sometimes in school, um, you might tell a lie to get yourself out of eating with a friend because you want to eat with another friend. Instead of saying, well, I can't eat with you today because uh, my mom said I wasn't allowed. That's not true. Just say, hey, I've ate with you three days this week, so I want to eat with my friend so-and-so today. Just be honest. Honesty is always the best policy. Um, tolerant. Tolerant means that you understand that not everyone is the same. Okay. Um, and you understand that differences are a good thing. If everyone thought, looked, and felt the same, there would be our, it would not be a very interesting life. Okay. So we have to tolerate, we have to have tolerance for our friends. They might think differently than you. They might look differently than you. They might have different customs, traditions. Um, they might not celebrate Christmas. They might, um, Celebrate other holidays, something different from you. They might go to a church that's different than yours. Um, they might have a different skin color. They might um, come from a different country. They might have different moms and dads. Um, they might have different family dynamics. Okay, they might live with their um, they might live with their grandma. They might live with their aunts. Um, Kids are different. Everyone is different. And that's okay. And everyone's family dynamic is different. Okay. And that's okay. We have to have tolerance for everybody. We have to get along with them. We have to work with them. And that's okay, guys. Um, not everyone's going to be like us. And that's a good thing, actually. So we have to have tolerance for each other. Um, let's see. Respectful. Oh, my goodness. When I heard the uh, um, Sammy Shrimp, I think that was his name. Talk to his mom like that? I was like, oh my goodness, that is not good. We have to be respectful for to everyone, not just adults, which adults is very important. Okay. We need to respect our grown-ups because they do a lot for us. Okay. And um they help us to survive, right? If it wasn't for grown-ups, we we couldn't take care of ourselves. So we have to be respectful to everyone. But um, being respectful, that doesn't mean just with your words. Like you never want to use bad words towards your adults or towards kids or your friends. Um, but being respectful also means respecting people's differences and respecting how they live and respecting their family and respecting um, every aspect of their life. So we have to have respect, not only uh, for the adults, but also to our friends. We should respect our friends and their feelings. Okay. All right. And trustworthiness. So that goes along with honesty. Um, trustworthy means that um, you can always count on you. If you have a best friend, they should always be able to count on you. And um, they should always be able to call you up and say, hey, um, I'm really behind in math. And could you help me, please? I um, don't understand this problem number three. Could you help me with that? And they trust you to help them. 
Um, it also means that um, they will trust you with their personal things that they're going through. So maybe they're having a hard time in their family. Maybe their family's going through a lot and they just need to they just need to talk to their best friend about it. They trust that you will not say anything to anybody else. That's being a very bad friend. If you run and tell, that's being a very bad friend, okay? So being a good friend is being trustworthy. And last, being responsible. So being responsible in a friendship means that if you make plans with them, um, you should be responsible enough to keep the plans, okay? Um, it also means that you give as much as you take. Sometimes you see a bad friendship and there's one person take, 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 taken. Um, so you need to be responsible enough to, to give as much as you take. Our um, quote for this month is, if you want to have a friend, you have to be a friend. And I love that quote because some people just think that they don't have to do nothing. Everyone's going to be my friend no matter what. Well, that's not true. That's not right. If you want to have friends, you have to be a good friend in return. Okay. And that is being responsible. Now, the video has went over a long time. I didn't mean for it to get this long, but y'all got me on my a soapbox here with all these because they are very, very important. Um, so let's give the gift of friendship. Let's be a good friend. Let's use all of our um, new words that we learned today and we will be a good friend if you can do all these. All right. And I hope to see you all in January. I'm keeping my fingers crossed because we do miss you here and I miss you. And um, I hope you all can have a great day and I hope you all have a um, wonderful holiday season. Bye, guys.